Pace breathing is a powerful emotion regulation strategy used in DBT. There is a lot of research showing that breathing really slow, about 6 breaths per minute, can strongly regulate our emotions. This way of breathing activates our parasympathetic nervous system, which is our body's emotion regulation response, opposite to the fight or flight response. You may have gotten advice to take a few deep breaths when you are upset, which may help to some degree, but more is needed for it to be effective. Feeling anxious or upset makes us breathe faster, and it is also true that when we breathe excessively fast and shallow, it increases our anxiety and distress. If we breathe like a person who is upset or unable to tolerate a situation, then that will become our reality. If we breathe like a person who is calm, we regulate our nervous system and eventually become more calm. When we practice slow breathing frequently, we will become less emotionally triggered and able to recover more quickly. When doing paced breathing, you have to make sure you're breathing slowly enough, but most people don't breathe slowly enough on their first try. Breathing close to 6 breaths per minute is the most effective for an average adult. If you have trouble breathing that slowly, just do your best to get as close to 6 breaths per minute as you can. Breathing slowly gets easier with repeated practice. If you're a teenager, try to breathe at 6.5 breaths per minute, which means you would try to complete 10 breaths in a minute and 30 seconds. You can target 7 breaths per minute if that seems like a better pace for you, which is more likely to be true if you're a younger age, like 14 or 15. It is even more effective to breathe at your resonance frequency pace if you know it. Your resonance pace is the breathing pace that achieves optimal physiological regulation for you. When your breathing rhythm matches your heart rhythm, and each exhale slows your heart rate to the greatest extent possible, followed by your heart rate increasing during the inhale, Together, your breathing and heart signal safety to your brain to get out of the fight or flight mode. Resonance pace varies among individuals. It may be 7 breaths per minute for you, but 5 breaths per minute for another person. A trained biofeedback therapist can use biofeedback equipment to determine your resonance pace. Here's a view of the synchrony between breathing and heart rate when a person breathes close to 6 breaths per minute. The balloon indicates the lungs filling and releasing air when a person breathes in and out. Listen to the sound of the heartbeat and how it speeds up when the lungs are filling and slows down when the lungs are emptying. 100 beats per minute at the end of the inhales and 60 beats per minute at the end of the exhales. The simplest way to make sure you are breathing at your target pace is to use a breathing pacer. Most pacers are sounds or things that you look at to prompt you when to inhale and exhale. On the DBT Center of San Diego website, you'll find a variety of pacers. Here are the breathing pacers and here are the options for biofeedback equipment and apps. With the audio pacers you are about to hear, match your inhale to the first segment of sounds and match your exhale to the second segment of sounds. The balloon image will show you how to do this with the guitar and flute pacers. As the balloon inflates, breathe in. As the balloon deflates, breathe out. And you'll notice this way of breathing matches the changes in pitch of the guitar and flute sounds. Once you understand how to do this, you can close your eyes and simply follow the sounds in this way. If you don't like the sounds, you can turn off the sound and match your breathing to the balloon. Specific techniques make pace breathing effective. Breathe from your lower abdomen rather than your upper chest. You can place one hand on your abdomen and one on your chest to make sure that during your paced breathing, your abdomen is moving, but not your chest. It is sometimes helpful to slow down your exhales by tightening your lips to make the opening smaller, which will make you release the air more slowly. If you focus your attention on the sound, it can help you stay focused on the breathing rather than drift to disrupted thoughts. Another way to keep your attention on your breathing is to keep your mind on the task of counting. 4 seconds on the inhale, and then count 6 on the exhale. Make sure to breathe slowly for at least 5 minutes straight. Preferably 10, which will often help you much more than if you do it for only 1 minute. Finally, be patient and focus on effective coping. In many intense situations, it is unlikely that you will notice much of a difference after a few minutes of paced breathing and you may not feel better even after 10 or more minutes. The most likely outcome is you will tolerate your emotion much better and get through the situation skillfully without making it worse. When emotion comes on strong, 
and you feel a strong urge to do something impulsive or harmful, paced breathing is an effective way to ride the emotion wave and to surf the urge. It means you get through the emotion or urge by not getting caught up in it and staying focused and balanced. Ask your therapist to teach you these skills if you haven't already learned them. If you have big struggles regulating your emotions, you will likely need a lot of practice breathing at your target pace before you will be able to make these skills work after big emotion triggers. Put all the mp3 audio files on your phone right away so that you'll be ready to breathe through your next emotion episode. When you notice your emotion or urge is strong, pull out your phone, set its timer for 5 minutes, and start a pacer. If you're really upset, it will be really hard to breathe slowly at first, so you'll need to start with a faster pacer, perhaps 8 breaths per minute. As you adjust to a somewhat slower pace, select the slowest pace you can follow and repeat the process until you reach your target pace, even closer to 6 breaths per minute. You will have much more success if you practice slow breathing a lot. At a minimum, people with severe emotional reactivity may need at least 15 minutes of resonance frequency breathing at least 4 days per week for at least 10 weeks straight. You will also have much more success if you practice without relying on breathing pacers since you will not always have access to pacers. One way to do this is to frequently practice with the 10 breath pace test, which you can learn by watching the YouTube video. If you need help with your emotions, I hope you practice this skill and give it a full try. I think you'll be glad you did.